Jewish American. Oh, just be an American. If you're Ukrainian, be Ukrainian. If you if you are an Israelite, be an Israelite. If you're Hebrew, be Hebrew. If you're African American, African American, great. If you're an American, be an American. Hold it, claim it. I'm a believer and follower of Christ. Great. But you see, when we go to such lengths to separate ourselves, then we have more separation. Now I want to take you, I think I got my, uh, Mark 3, 25, right here, 325. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables, parables. I love this. Jesus wasn't so focused on science and math. He taught in pictures. I love that because I can understand pictures, science, and math, not my thing. So he taught in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided in, in, against itself, that house cannot stand. So here we go again. If you are breeding unforgiveness, your future generations who may not have it will be battling against you. We can see, we can see the baby boomers and the baby zoomers against the, the me generation. Oh, there's a clash. They have those baby boomers. They think they know everything. And you can see that division right there. You can see it in our politics. Oh, the liberals and oh, the, 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 the Republicans or the Tea Party, the libertarians. We can see all of that. We can see this city against that city. We can see the riots, oh, the cops and the, and the people, and this community against this community. And you know what? A house divided can't stand. This church against that church. Ministries coming and attacking, or people in, in no ministries coming and attacking other people in ministry because they have needs. What is that? How, how are we coming together as a body of Christ to raise one another up if we spend all of our time butchering and badgering a house you divided cannot stand and so you have the power you do you right where you are sitting on that comfy couch sitting in a chair maybe you're even lying in bed maybe you're on the treadmill wherever you are sitting in front of the computer you have the power you be the change that you want if you want people around you to be loving start loving them you want people around you to be forgiving start forgiving them you want people around you to be happy find happy people to be around <laughs> be happy do something but recognize this that so long as you don't step up to be the change that you know that this whole word says that is required you're not going to get there it's a choice how bad do you want it how bad do you want more of what's in this word you know all i want is all of what god has for me it's really that simple that's it freedom peace relationship with jesus this is this is not a Go get in a, a, a church building and play pretend church. That is not what this is. In these days and times, we are all accountable. We have all got to stand up united together and say, you know, what? I forgive you, brothers and sisters. I forgive you that you aren't what I expect you to be. I forgive you past for how what the people in the past have done have us to where we are today. Some will say we're making strides, we're making strides, and then somebody will come and, and ruin it for us, and then, and then we're back where we were. And then we start all over again, and then we're back where we were, and then we keep going. So now is the time to forgive that. Now is the time for each one of us to break the cycle and say, you know what, we need to do, we need to stand united in forgiveness so that way we are protecting our future families. Because if we don't, who else will? And if they're born into unforgiveness, what chance do they have? They have to be like I was and start from the very, very bottom and work my way out of the pit of homelessness and, and forgive all those people that put me there so that way I can get out and help everyone else get up. And now is the time that we have got to do that. And maybe that's you not having to come out of that pit. Maybe your pit's a little bit higher up, praise God, for you, right? But you know what? We all have to pick ourselves up. Is it easy? I'm not going to tell you anything's easy. Because I would be a liar and I would be a fool and then you would be self-deceived and, and then say, I didn't know, Professor Blair, that it was this hard. Yeah, it is. Picking up your cross and walking daily, walking at your salvation is a walk in progress. It's not a once saved, always saved. I, I, was, I, I gave my life to Christ in 1976 and that was it. It's a process. It's a walk. Living in forgiveness is a process. It is a journey. It is a challenge, and my hope is that you are able to accept the challenge, to accept the challenge of saying, you know what, I want to live a better way. I want to be a better model for my children. I want my children born into freedom. Yes, we know, based upon the curse of Adam and Eve, their sin, we get that. 
but this is where you have more power than you think. Today I'm going to I'm going to start loving on people and forgiving them. I am going to I'm going to open my heart and share and understand where other people are coming from instead of just deny listening to them because I don't like this or that about them. Today's the day that I'm going to receive all the blessings and not the curses. Today's the day I'm removing the curse of unforgiveness from my family lineage so that way my children are free and have that burden removed. Today's the day no longer is bitterness or resentment or pride or envy or angry, angry or covetousness going to have any impact in my life. Today is the day that peace dwelleth within. Today is the day that I live by the fruit of the Spirit, all the fruit. Today is the day that I am proclaiming victory in forgiveness. And you know what? When you get to that place, you have to resolve to do it. And I have to do it daily because I am around people. And there are just some people that, you know, it's hard. I'm not going to. This message, these messages, it's always great when God shows so much about this because these are things that I had to take a look at very seriously in my own life. I am, <laughs> I'm no different than you are. I mean, I wash my hair every couple days like many of you that I know. You know, it just works better that way. And I'm no different. And this is, this is where we are when we start coming together to recognize that we can learn more from each other than we can without each other. We will get much further. And that's the goal today, is to recognize you have a purpose, you have a mission, you have an assignment. You do. You have a command in the Word of God to forgive. And that is a very, very serious assignment, and it's a very exciting one as well, because it will give you more purpose to live out all of what He has called you to do. Because God does not make mistakes, and you are not a mistake, and He's even counted every single hair on your head. And that's a God who loves you and a God who wants to see you live in all of the abundance. And you know what? That's what this whole ministry is about. Healing individuals in forgiveness, restoring families, and delivering nations in forgiveness or through forgiveness. And if you want to be a part of that, you know what? We can always use your support. Share us your testimonies. Share with me your stories about forgiveness and how you've been healed by it. Share or ask whatever questions you have. This whole ministry is designed to help you live in forgiveness. And if you need a place to tithe, remember us as well. And as we close out, remember that a life worth living is a life of forgiving.